What now? Just a sneaky snacky smooth. second row, sucked me off three nights ago, oh yes, wasn't very good, she was wearing braces, cut me cock to ribbon, see the fella sat right down here, look at his hair coat, he must be a queer, oh yes, nothing wrong with that, if a man wants highlights, there's really nothing wrong with that. Me rigid. Hey! <laughs> the live DVD tonight, and you're all in it! Alright! Hey! <laughs> Let's have a bit of a march out. Fuck it. 
to school, man. No then. No then, no then, no then. How are you, sir? You all right? You're like a young Fred West, you ain't you? It's a fucking... Ooh, a little bit disturbing. How's everyone upstairs, all right? I tell you something about the people who sit upstairs. They're the life and soul of any show. I love them. <laughs> now, because it's the live DVD, and before we get going, does anyone want a picture? Has anyone got a camera? Have you, have you got a camera? Yeah. You didn't hope me, love. You take your time. We're a long play tonight, you're all right. No, no, I'm not. It, she just said it was my Christmas present. Please don't take it off. I'm not a fucking thief. <laughs> You've got enough witnesses. How you come? How you come? Fuck me. Right. No, what is it? That one there on top. Is it that one? Hang on, hang on. Yeah, here. Yeah. Go on, get old love. Come this way. Come this way. Oh, we're gonna have a proper picture. No, oh, don't. Don't worry about it, you'll be all right. Have you got that set? <laughs> there you go, sit yourself back there, thank you very much. Ooh. <sighs> I'm fucking semi erect up here. I'd like to explain that one at Boots. <laughs> Cat in front of the fire. Me and my boyfriend. Paddy McGuinness fucking up the ass. I mean... <laughs> no. What I should have done when I came on is, have we got any kids in? <laughs> Thank fuck for that. <laughs> what happens is, when I'm touring, kids will say to the mums and dads, hey, Phoenix Knights, Max and Paddy, Peter K, all that kid sliding about on the knees. <laughs> you nan dancing. I'm the dark side of the team, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes. Yes. To sum it up, he talks about the wedding day, I talk about the honeymoon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't mind it. I don't mind all the catchphrases and everything from the programme. Well, I say I don't mind it. Apart from about three weeks ago, I was shopping on Bolton Market. Fella tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around and he went, Hey, garlic sauce. <laughs> One, it's not even mine. And two, it's garlic bread, knobhead. <laughs> anyway. It was a bit, a bit of a strange start of the year for me because I got an invite off Robbie Williams, right? Go out to his house. Oh, hey! Oh, hi! Right. You can still smell him on me, love. Come here! <laughs> <laughs> he phoned me up out of blue. He said, Luke, do you want to do a week at my place in Beverly Hills? He got the word Hills out, the phone were down, my fucking case were packed. <laughs> Pair of socks, 200 Johnnies. <laughs> Our God! Fucking tell you. <laughs> they couldn't get that little tray down up playing. They had a big fucking stalk on. Sorry, love. I'm doing a wee with Williams in Beverly Hills. No, I can do about this. <laughs> it were a big deal for me going over there. Because where I'm from in Bolton, I think the technical term's shit all. <laughs> so I'm out there and it's all good and we're having a laugh. And the second night, he takes me out to this bar, right? Now, in this bar, we're Bono from you too. So, oh, hi, hey, hey, oh, it gets better. It gets better, son. I go, hey, I'm a little bit starstruck, Bono, you too. He come right over to me and went, Paddy, pleased to meet you. I'm a really big fan. I was shaking like a shitting dog. <laughs> oh, fucking like that. No word of a lie, I went, 
The pleasure's all mine, bongo. at me like I've just took a shit in his mouth. <laughs> you weren't best pleased. And the women over there, I tell you now, British women, you lot are the best in the world. Oh, I'm telling you girls, you lot, you are the best. The girls over there, right, they've no sense of humour. They're fucking solid. <laughs> we were playing football every night and I pulled a muscle in my back. So he says, do you want a massage? I said, no, I'm all right. He said, I have my own masseur. I said, no, I'm fine. He went, she's very good. I said, she? I were on that bed in a fucking shot. <laughs> and I'm lay there, and she's giving me a bit of a rub down, and she says, turn over, face up. So I'm lay like that, and she starts massaging down my right arm. Fucking shooting up up there, that fucking. Man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She starts massaging down my right arm. She says, Your right arm's a little bit stiff. I said, It will be, love. I've not had a girlfriend for a month. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> she went, she went. Hey, well, I guess you're playing a lot more racket sports now then. No love wanking, but it were lost on you. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> and while things are going well at the moment, I've just got myself my first ever house. I've never owned my own property. Hey. Thanks, love. Thanks for that, yeah. Thanks, thanks, sister. <laughs> and because it's my own place, I'm really house proud, right? I even I hoover up about six or seven times a day, right? What's so funny about that? I'm a fucking modern man, love. <laughs> I even do that thing when I'm hoovering up. I used to watch my mum do this when I was a kid. You'll be hoovering something up like that. It won't come up, so you bend over, pick it up, look at it, put it back down, carry on fucking it. <laughs> fucking hell's that? Get off, you little bastard. Come here. What the fuck is it? Fucking marble. <laughs> I've been in the house a week. I had my family over, right? Now, my cousin, I can't stand a little bastard. He's one of them kids, dead thin body, massive head. Odd looking fucker. He says, can I use the toilet? Now, he's a type of kid, don't send him upstairs. He'll be fucking rooting through everything, all your drawers and that. I said, yeah, you can use the toilet, the downstairs one. Thinking a wee. It smelt like a fucking docker had been in there. <laughs> there were crap all down the pan. We had to open every window in the downstairs of the house. And I've since found out off his mum, he does it at everyone's house. He's a serial shitter. <laughs> she said, it's really embarrassing. I said, what's embarrassing is a week later I have my mates round and the house still stinks of shit, look. <laughs> Anyhow, he's under the patio now, so swings and roundabouts. <laughs> also, when you're touring, you're watching the news and reading the papers and seeing what's going on in the world, and there's been a lot of people not happy. They've got this new James Bond now, right? And have we any James Bond fans in? <laughs> Just them or everyone else. No, we can't fucking stand him. What have you brought his name up for? <laughs> Coming round here with his fancy laser watches. Packing his ass in wherever he wants, he can fuck off. <laughs> the new James Bond, right? Now he's got ginger hair. You can't have a ginger James Bond. girl coming out of the ocean exotic location where's bond under a palm tree factor 38 ah <laughs> 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 
fire, I'm melting, I'm burning up. <laughs> Fuck her, she can die. <laughs> Fucking prickly, it's a bastard. <laughs> None of that strawberry blonde bollocks either. <laughs> and you shouldn't really judge a book by its cover, like this next man. No, I love Freddy. Oh, I love him. Oh, I, yeah. But I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall in the room when he got the band together and said, Guys, I've something to tell you. I'm gay. <laughs> no shit, Freddy, really? <laughs> We'd have never have guessed. Hang on, let's have a look here. Not king, fucking queen. <laughs> that and the fact that you sat on Darth Vader's shoulders, bit of a giveaway. We're going to have a bit of fun tonight, and we are going to have a giggle, but over the last eight years or so, there's been a lot of bad things happening in the world, and sometimes you've got to take a bit of time out to have a think about it. Now, we're filming this tonight, so it's a good time to bring this up, and we've had things like 9-11 and the uh, floods in New Orleans and the tsunami disaster, but there was one incident that happened in June 2000 that I think was that bad most people have blanked it out of their minds. And I want to take a minute tonight just to think about it, because, you know, it really was terrible. It was when Keith Chegwin... <laughs> please, please, please... ..did a game show on national TV... ..stark bollock... Naked, let's have a look. Yes! <laughs> Lest we not forget Blackpool. <laughs> I was lay in bed half 12 at night, flicking through the channels. I put channel 5 on. I thought, are my eyes deceiving me? <laughs> or is kids' TV's Keith Chegwin running around with his cock and balls out? <laughs> no, please. Take it in. <laughs> Take it in. <laughs> and never forget. <laughs> Abby Titmus takes a dress to the dry cleaner. She says, can you get this stain off the front? He said, come again. She went, no, it's gravy. That's the standard tonight, son. Very high. Oh, yeah, you're going to get every penny's worth sunshine. goes to the doctors, I feel like a cowboy. How long have you felt like that? He said about a year. A year long, I'm spoiling you this money. We're filming it as well. Fucking sweating up here. <laughs> I tell you, it's cheaper coming out for a night out now than stopping him. You put the telly on on Saturday night, you've got X Factor and fucking the two of us and celebrity ice skin and all this carry on and Celebrity I'm eating kangaroos dicks in the jungle and all that fucking carry on. Anton Deck, please vote. Please vote. Pound a minute, lad, you can fuck off. <laughs> the only thing I'd see on telly now and I'd pay for would be fucking glitter getting shot. <laughs> Saturday night, you sat there, big bag of crisps, can of beer, phone at side of you, ring in. If you'd like to see Gary have his balls put in a vice, <laughs> press one. If you'd like to see Gary receive a dry bumming, <laughs> press two. If you'd like to see Gary face the firing squad, press three. So that'll be me, number three, here we go. So you sat there, he's tied to post, bandana around eyes, little fucking grey beard. <laughs> Prison guards will be there with guns. Caster Tenko will be watching. <laughs> He'd get them all going. Stop! Cop! Stop right there! Now, I'd love to show you this, I'd love to, but GG, the glitter, he's put a stop on it. I can't show you. My hands are tied in glitter-laden handcuffs. I'm sorry, you're a piss your size as well. Carry on. 
<laughs> Fucking Saturn on. Go on, Gary! Go on, son, show me till the end. Get on going. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What have I told you? Stop! We can't show it! The lawyers have had me pants down and give me a dry one! I'm telling you, Gigi would have me in a bed sitting next year if I show this. I can't do it. I'm sorry. You'd have loved it. It used to bring the house down. Pedals have rights too. I'm sorry. Carry on. Now, the character I play in Phoenix Knights and Max and Paddy is addicted. Thanks. <laughs> He's addicted to sex, right? Now, that used to be me. It used to be me. It stemmed from childhood. I were about 12 year old playing in a six week. <laughs> Fucking hell, who's in here, Brady? 12 years! Shut the fuck up! Have a fucking lynching on our hands here, son. <laughs> As I was saying, I were out playing six week holidays. Now, me and my friend, we found this big box of dirty books, right? Now, when I say dirty books, love, I don't mean books with a bit of dirt on. I mean filth. No, no. I say that, girls, because if you find your boyfriend's or your husband's dirty magazines, you lose your minds. Filthy bastard! Animal! You're a fucking pervert! <laughs> Lest we not forget, girls, that you get pleasure from putting a pair of rabbit's ears... <laughs> ..on your clitty clue. <laughs> no. I don't care how rampant it is. He's bang out of order, let's have a look. Yes! Oh, yes! This girl's legs are twitching like a running on front. <laughs> if that's not bad enough, I saw a vibrator once, not with a rabbit on it, with a dolphin. A dolphin, let's have a look again. Oh! How erotic! <laughs> the footmen, I've got flipper. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me on to my next picture, Exhibit A. <laughs> no. Lovely, fluffy bunny. That does it for you. Flipper. That does it for you. Can you sink any lower girls? Yes, you can. The new one that's just come out is called The Little Kitty. The Little Kitty. Let's have a look at... Oh, what? Come on, little kitty. Come on, get in fucking the ear. <laughs> Fuck me. Hang on, I'm coming back down. Fucking sort this out once and for all. Now, love, can you tell me and every other man in this room what you find attractive about that? Nothing. 3,000 people, I've picked the only lesbian. What are the fucking odds? <laughs> Piss take. <laughs> fucking filming this! <laughs> One of the first nights of the tour, I did Burnley, right? And I went out into... Oh, I... Fucking hell, I've got a right on our hands. Yeah, Burnley. I went out into the audience, I said, love, can you tell me what you find attractive about that? She went, it doesn't fucking snow her. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> so we find this big box of books. Now, the only trouble was they were soaked in petrol, right? Someone were trying to get rid of them, set them on fire. No, one or two things happened. He were either one, disturbed by a passing dog walker. They are nosy bastards, them. <laughs> Anything you see on news, they're always fucking first on scene. <laughs> I was walking my dog down by the canal when I discovered the body. If we'd have sent a dog walker to Afghanistan, we'd have got Bin Laden long ago. 
I was walking my dog through the Afghan mountains <laughs> when I chanced upon a tall Arab looking gentleman pulling a kidney dialysis machine. <laughs> it were either that or this fella's hands were that disfigured through wanking he couldn't get fucking matches out of box lights up like this bastard in a minute. <laughs> So me and my friends split them and two come up. Hang on a minute. Whoa, 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 not that. Where the fuck are you going? Hey, it's not fucking Sky Plus, son. You can't pause me. <laughs> hey, so I'll be recorded tonight. I'll be like, just pausing, pausing while I go for a piss. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> so, anyhow. We take these magazines home, right, and I'm reading mine in my bedroom. And my mum comes home, so I'm panicking. Where does 12-year-old lad hide 50... <laughs> petrol salt... <laughs> razzles... in the urine cupboard just above the hot water heater? <laughs> Fucking genius. I went to bed. Thought nothing of it, got up the next day, went out playing with my friends, came home, they'd sealed our streets off. <laughs> Firemen were leading people out of houses, tears streaming down their cheeks. <laughs> and that's when I knew it were my razzles, because every time I looked at them, I had put a pair of fucking swimming goggles on. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> we were like chopping onions. <laughs> Fumes they were giving off, I were high as a kite. I walked downstairs, hello, mother. Where have I been? Upstairs, I'm a little winky, wanky woo. <laughs> so that's how I started off, and I got worse and worse throughout my life. Now, if you're addicted to something, there comes a point where you hit the wall. Like an alcoholic will find themselves in the bathroom drinking matey bubble bath. Pissing neat wicked in sink. <laughs> and the point where I hit the wall work, I was sat in my mum's front room, right, and a dog walked in, right. No, 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 look. There's a line we don't cross, my love. Right. A dog walked in right past me, stopped in front of the fire, not like that, but like that. Right. Right past me, boulders brass. Like that. And for a split second, I looked, I thought, you sassy little bitch. Oh. <laughs> thought, bit of a problem here. So I went to the doctors, I told him everything. He said, how many people have you ever slept with in your life? I said, how many? As quick as you could put them underneath me. Next, 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 Shetland ponies, I'll do it, anything. Oh, terrible. So he said, right, I'd like you to go to the STD clinic. No, I might split you here. But has anyone <laughs> in this room ever been to an STD clinic? Lying bastards! <laughs> you must have been me old son. You've got genital warts written all over you. <laughs> well, I tell you, the one in Bolton, it's really, really embarrassing. Now, I went in. There's a girl there behind the counter, and she was reading a magazine, so I did the polite thing. I just, uh, um, um, um. She said, throat clinic's down there. I said, oh, no, no, love. It's not my throat, it's this little rapscallion here. So she sends me through to this room. Now, I thought it was going to be like Asda Deli counter. You know when you get one of them tickets? 82 vaginal thrush. It's not like that. Big square room full of people sat all around the edges, noses pressed in magazines. Don't look up in case you recognise some fucker. <laughs> the first series of Phoenix Nights had just been on, so I'm already a little bit paranoid. I get my magazine, I sit down, I just heard... Dick don't do! <laughs> oh, fucking hell no, please. Sat down at the side of me, it was a lad I used to work with years ago. 
Now, he asked me the one question you never, ever, ever ask anyone in an STD clinic. You're ahead of me. What are you here for? What are you in an STD clinic for? I thought, honesty is the best policy. I said, I'm waiting for my mate. <laughs> Just as I say that, this nurse comes out. She goes, Patrick McGuinness. So I get up and I see her. And before you go in to see this doctor, they give you a form and you fill it out. And it's, how many sexual partners have you ever had? Have you had sex with the same sex person? Have you ever fucked a budgie from Africa? They were all in there. <laughs> so you fill this out and go into this room. No, in this room, there were a doctor and this student, nurse, right? She was numb as piss stones. <laughs> oh, she was stood in corner like that. <laughs> Sit down. Doctor will be with you in a minute. <laughs> Thanks. So I sit down. This doctor says we're going to do three tests. Blood test, urine test, and a urethra test. Oh. Well, get them fucking lights up. <laughs> Heard a bit of a intake of breath there. Those who have never been. Lying bastards. <laughs> take the lights down, take them down, take them down. Fucking watching you. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from me and Mr. X over there, <laughs> a urethra test is when they take a piece of steel near a fucking sparkler. <laughs> which feels like it's been lit and push it down your pipe. <laughs> now, they can put a man on the moon, but apparently there's no other way of doing this test. The women will be glad to know. I said, doctor, um, can I have the human beings one? I don't want fucking red rums one. <laughs> I was shocked. He's having it done at Vex! <laughs> well, if I get rid of this bit for you, too graphic! <laughs> he says, take everything off, waist down, get on the bed, I'll come back in in a minute. She still stood there. <laughs> take everything off, waist down. Get on bed, he'll be back in in a minute. Thanks again. So I get on this bed, right? Feet in stirrups. <laughs> Fuck all on. <laughs> Bollocks ranging down. Ass were like a Japanese flag. Doctor walked back and he said, wrong bed, Mr. McGuinness. <laughs> this silly bitch, you just watched me get on this. <laughs> Anyhow, I got on the man's bed in the end. And they did the test, and it was painful, but not as painful as I thought it would be, because it were cold in the room, I had a little bit of shrinkage. You know. <laughs> no, no. When I say shrinkage, I don't mean it were nearly touching my fucking spine. <laughs> I don't mind that, though, girls, because at the end of the day, men with big willies are crap lovers. Whew. Oh, thank fuck you clap then. <laughs> I could sense every other woman, you're talking shit, McGuinness. <laughs> it's true that us lesser blessed men with nine inches.
<laughs> we have to rely on these touching, caressing. As for that, that have put that rabbit on the fucking doll. <laughs> I tell you, if I had a massive, massive willy like that, I'd be so arrogant. I'd get ready on a night out, shirt on, aftershave, slappy chop chops, pair of shoes, fuck all else. <laughs> Maybe a wheel on end of it. <laughs> Can I come in here tonight? <laughs> Are you over 21? Inches! <laughs> I'd have a piss, I won't shake it dry, I'd kick the fucker. <laughs> Blackpool, and I mean really let down, like that knobhead going for a piss earlier on. <laughs> As a kid, I was let down by a superhero, right? Now, Batman, I loved Batman. He had the smart car, the fancy weapons, I loved all that. Superman, the man of steel, flying about, and more importantly, X-ray vision. I bet he did some wanking! <laughs> hey! Not normal wanking, super wanking. <laughs> Not like us lads half lock every door in house, take phone off hook and put sock on. <laughs> sock? What's he on about, sock? <laughs> Dave, I've done your washing again. Oh, another odd sock, where did he keep going? <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake, McGuinness, shut up, man. You're giving away the trade secrets, son! <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, dear me. This lad can do that in a second. What's that? A meteorite's going to hit the earth in 30 seconds. Hang on. Hey! I'll be there in 29. <laughs> he can crack one off. I'll wear there, that lad. You know when you're out and about and you see statues and cars with what you think's bird poo on them? <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. Swinging about with the webs, climbing up the walls. I loved all that. So we've got Batman, Superman and Spider-Man. The one that let me down, fucking Elephant Man. <laughs> Was that just me, that one? An hour and a half, me and my mates queued up, watch that bastard. <laughs> Pissing down rain, but we didn't give two fucks. Because we were that excited. Elephant Man. What must his powers be? And he shoots lasers out of his trunk. <laughs> no, no, he'll have big tusks what come out of his face. Come on! We got him. One, it were in black and white. Two, he didn't even have a cape. And three, when he took that sack off his head, I had to see a psychiatrist for a month. No. No. Do you know when you're getting ready on a night out and your hair's not quite right? <laughs> Spare a ball for this poor fucker here. <laughs> no. I'm really, really, really sorry to do this to you tonight, Blackpool, but I do want to talk about this little bastard up here. No, oh, no, no. Ba ding 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 little twat! That should be over that. What's even under there? Yeah. <laughs> the first time I ever heard that go off, right, I was studying a takeaway. 
queuing up, reading the paper, minding my own business, it went off. Ba ring ding dilly ding ding dong dong. I said, no love, just too lightly battered. <laughs> Keep the diddly ding dong doos. They give me terrible heartburn. It was some knobhead behind me with a hoodie on. Right, now, I don't know about round here, but in Bolton, we've got a ban on people with hoodies going in shopping centres and what have you. Have they got that round here? I fucking hell! <laughs> Is the sheriff a fucking Blackpool in? <laughs> I God damn me, boy! Those little fuckers coming here! Ah! Yeah! Fuck me, we're on the ball, it then? Fucking bastard Charles Bronson's in! He piano wire fucking chugged the life out of them. <laughs> fucking hell, he is one angry bastard. <laughs> but, I must admit, I agree with him. And I were arguing with my mate about this. I said, Luke, it's a good thing. He said, it's not. He said, you can't ban people wearing hoodies in shopping centres. I said, yes, you can. He said, my gran wears a hoodie. I said, your gran doesn't wear that hoodie up on her head with a baseball cap underneath, peak up, urge her forward, track tooth pants on, tucked into a rock box, walking round, mobile phone out, happy slapping every bastard in the face! <laughs> I said, if she does, she wants putting in a fucking home. <laughs> Did I let you bring drinks in here? No, no but has anyone snuck one in? Has anyone snuck one in? So I love. Oh, you're the one who likes the little dicks. I'll, hey, hey, fucking hell, it's getting better, this. <laughs> fucking piss take. Has anyone, someone must have a drink. Oh, that's the one time, my friend. Thanks very much. It's been murder because we tore him. You sort of keep getting sore throats and I've been getting all these viral infections and phlegm and fuck. <laughs> no, you don't want it back. All right. <laughs> now, as I was saying at the beginning, things are going well at the moment. The only trouble I have is I can't find a girl. No, hey, no, please, don't feel sorry for me. I get sucked off every night. <laughs> I mean, a nice girl. <laughs> and I thought I found one once. The only trouble was she had this younger sister who were a real tease, really bad. And she wore little mini skirts and low-cut tops, and if no one were about, she'd, like, drop stuff on the floor in front of me and slowly bend over and... Oh, I'll just pick that up. <laughs> it fucking drove me mad. And one day I went round to the house and nobody were in apart from this younger sister. She was stood at the top of the stairs, miniskirt, low-cut top, looked down the stairs at me, peeled her knickers off from underneath, threw them down and went, you bedroom, no. For once in my life, I thought, no. I did. I walked out of the house, down the path to the car. As I'm getting to my car, her dad's there, tears in his eyes, wraps his arms around me. Son, well done. You've passed the test. Welcome to the family. Now, the moral of this story is, always leave your johnnies in the car. a snake in the jungle, bored to tears. What can we do? We'll have a game of snooker. Hang on a minute, he says, we're in the jungle. He said, no, instead of shots, we'll do tricks. So the snake goes first. He jumps up, bolts upright, and goes down into a coil. Elephant says, right, that's worth about a red. What colour are you going to go for? He said, black. <sighs> Fucking hell, he says, this better be good. He said, it is. I'm going to shoot up your trunk, down your throat, work my way through your body, and come out the other end. He said, off you go. 
He's up the trunk, down the throat, halfway through the body, elephant bends over, sticks its trunk up his ass and goes, How's that for a snooker? <laughs> now, when you were all coming in tonight, there was buckets dotted about the theatre. And you could ask me anything you wanted, any question. Now, this bucket's backstage, right? If I bring it out and you've put a question in and your name's on it, don't be shy. Tell me where you are. We'll turn all the lights up <laughs> and we'll have a bit of a chat. All right, can we just have the bucket on, please? Thanks very much. Has the rash cleared up? No? All right. No. <laughs> fucking hell, why have I said that? She'll be fucking suing me. When you're touring, you can gauge a town or a city by the questions it asks. Now, they said to me, where do you want to film your live DVD? I said, there's only one place, Blackpool. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was thinking, culture. <laughs> Intelligence. Better class of people. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at your first question. How big's your cock? <laughs> Six inches on slack. <laughs> Fucking hell. This is from Michael from Lancaster. Have you? Yeah, just wait. <laughs> Have you ever eaten black squid ink? Don't, cause it's shit. <laughs> you know, strangely enough, I weren't fucking planning on some. <laughs> Can you give a shout out to the Blackpool KFC Massif? <laughs> what the f I don't know about KFC, but next time you go into a Burger King, right, have a look behind the counter, they all have these signs. It says, Burger King, you're the boss. So next time you go in, go, oi, lazy bastard, get these tables clean, get a fucking mop over that floor. They love it when you do that. Especially after they've been on shift for nine hours. It's fucking... Paddy, we have paid over the odds for your tickets on eBay. <laughs> so please, 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 can we come backstage afterwards to make up for it? Love, Kerry and Katie. Turn the lights up. <laughs> Where are you, Kerry and Katie? <laughs> Where, love? <laughs> Where? Lights down, lights down! <laughs> I mean, I like a drink, girls, but fucking hell. <laughs> As a ten pinter. <laughs> it's a bit of fun. I've had to put the lights up there, right? I wear glasses normally, and I'm blind as a bat. I really am. My eyesight's that bad. I got up the other day, opened the curtains, looked outside, no glasses on. There's a kangaroo there. <laughs> a kangaroo. It were only when I put my glasses on, I realised it were next to us greyhound having a shit in my garden. <laughs> Fucking kangaroos, who the fuck's all that about? Where's my readers? Oh, the filthy bastard! <laughs> Nigel from Ansdell would like to know 
Have I any tips on her loss? <laughs> Don't fucking start. <laughs> Have you ever eaten a sausage and mayonnaise sandwich and felt gay afterwards? You dirty bastard! Oh, uh, fuck me! <laughs> Did you ever manage to get a kick of the ball when you played in the match? No, fuck off. <laughs> no. Now, Luke, in my line of work, you get asked to play in a lot of charity football games, right? Now, I played in one at Anfield. Full house. I scored an own goal. No one's perfect. <laughs> right? And we were raising money for the tsunami disaster, right? Tsunami disaster. A week before, I'm in an office with Jason McAteer. He said, what do you think to the shirt sponsors? Ocean Finance. <laughs> I was sat there with a cup of coffee. I'm thinking, is there only me twig in this? <laughs> I said, might be a bit of a problem there, Jason. He said, why look at the emblem? Fucking big wave! <laughs> He's fucking clueless. Will you please go on a date with Lucy Cheeseman? No, wait, no, no, hang on, no. Do I put the lights up again? Yes or no? Right, put them up, put them up. Where are you? It's the one who likes the little dicks! Fucking two right, love! Get the lights down. What a fucking result that was. When I say little dicks, I don't mean fucking Paul Dan off uh, Love Island. <laughs> what a fucking nobed he is. Anyhow. <laughs> Can you sing Max and Paddy? Oh, fuck. <laughs> don't know where we're going, got no way of knowing, driving on the road to nowhere. Sponge for a living, checking out the women, riding on the road to nowhere. And we don't take shit from anyone. The only thing we want to do is have some fun. We're Max and Paddy. Best of all, we don't pay council tax. <laughs> yeah. Fuck the jokes, we'll have another sing song. Now, there's one song that follows me around everywhere, right? Not fucking Amarillo. <laughs> Up to there with that bastard. <laughs> I'm on about the theme tune to the finest programme ever to grace the Queen's English television. <laughs> bullseye? Fuck Bullseye, son! Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I can really get going to that. <laughs> I did that one night, someone shouted out, Baywatch! I didn't even know it were a series, and only elastic titles. Hank, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? It's a series? For half an hour? Are you fucking sure? Are you a machine? <laughs> I'm on a boat, mind her, take it away! You want a war, you got a war. If you want to have changed the situation, right people, right time, just the wrong. 
You're taking the piss at these prices! <laughs> now, look, firstly, before we go any further, let me just apologise to my friend here for that, that last incident. Come on, son. Come on. Come on. No, no. You, my friend. Come on. I'm from... Bo have got mobile phones, right? And all of them have got cameras on. And I think it's a good thing, especially as a comedian, if you're out and about and you see something funny, take a picture of it, show your friends after. Now the next picture I'm gonna show you lot here <laughs> is off my mobile phone, right? 100% genuine. It was from outside of a bar in Manchester. I couldn't believe, oh, I couldn't believe me fucking eyes were like that. Capture, capture. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> Spit roast every weekend. This is the best bit. Weather permitting. <laughs> Weather permitting. I don't know about you lot, if I'm spit roasting someone and it's raining outside, it puts me right off. <laughs> no, love, put your knickers back on. It's pissing down, I can't get a stalk on. Sorry. Do you go commando or do you wear boxers? Wait, that's off Gaz and Matt. <laughs> Where are you, lads? I don't do sluts with nuts. How big are your feet? Fucking size nines, what the fucking hell? Let's get, let's get some, some interesting ones. <laughs> you fucking what? Don't get your guns out of my back's turn while I'm facing you, come on! <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't speak pissed up knobhead love, I'm sorry I can't fucking understand it. Jazz up, Zanny! <laughs> hey you! Fucking hell. <laughs> Paddy, if you were a pigeon, who would you shit on? <laughs> Jonathan King. <laughs> and Paul the <Denham. laughs> Every time Camilla sucks Prince Charles's cock, she gets heartburn. The doctor said, try Andrews. <sighs> oh no. 
party at Calf's house, are you coming? Pause, all over our faces. <laughs> you dirty bitch. Where is it again, sorry? <laughs> Chris from Harrogate has put, do you think my missus is gorgeous or what? Put, put the fucking lights up. Yes, correct. Right, where are you, Chris? Where, son? Where's your missus? Yeah! Oh, she's, she's gorgeous, uh, Chris. Ooh, you're a lucky man. Get the fucking lights down quick. A real catch. <laughs> Fucking hell. Will you do us Lord Love Rocket? Oh, Fucking hang on, no way. All the Lord Love Rocket stuff we filmed about six years ago, right? But by God, live DVD, we are gonna do it tonight. Oh yeah! Take it away!